Today I'd like to discuss measuring the turbo shaft on a diesel turbocharger and uh, we're going to talk about dial indicator setup and uh, types of dial indicators. So first off let's explain what we're measuring here. Through the center of the turbocharger there is a shaft that connects the, the turbine wheel and the compressor wheel. They are connected solid and when one spins the other spins. There has to be a little bit of movement up and down and end to end and that's what we're going to measure. Uh, the up and down movement is known as radial movement as seen here on the paper tip of the dial indicator is against the either against the shaft or we'll show you an adapter we use but we're still measuring that movement up and down. The axial movement is in and out. We'll replace the dial indicator usually straight in line like in the picture here. Move the shaft in and out and measure in thousandths of an inch how much movement we have in each. After that we'll compare it to the specification uh, in the service manual and determine if they are within their range. There has to be a minimum of a half a thousandths on some turbochargers up and down or in and out or radial and axial. Um, but uh, to the same uh, degree, you can't have too much. So they'll have a maximum that we're going to compare against. So minimum and maximum. If we look at the turbocharger setup we have here, we have a dial indicator with an attachment going into the turbine side of the uh, turbocharger. And we're just right inside the, the, uh, the tip of it. And we're going to demonstrate the radial movement. So it'll be up and down. If you put your hand on the compressor side, you don't necessarily have to be set on zero, but you're going to uh, go movement up and down. So with the indicator uh, on the turbine side, uh, this cutaway, I can easily put my hand in here and move the turbine wheel up and down when see movement, but that's not possible on a turbo that's not cut away. So you take your hand and you go on the compressor side and move the compressor wheel up and down. Remember I said earlier they're connected so any movement that we get is going to be able to read. And we don't necessarily have to start on zero but you can set it on zero. We want to see the total movement and that's approximately 80, or excuse me, 23 thousandths and it returns back to zero. Uh, the magnetic base for the dial indicator needs to be uh, mounted or attached firmly on a flat surface. Uh, you'll see I have it propped up here a little bit so that it's solid and it does not flex or move because that will affect the reading that we get on the dial indicator. Some manufacturers want you to measure the radial uh, movement with a feeler blade or a feeler gauge like you see here. So with that the dial indicator is obviously not used but you will take the feeler blade and you can go with one that's the minimum, the other one that's the maximum, and you try and place it between the turbine housing and the turbine wheel, or they may specify on the compressor side, either way, but it's the clearance between the housing and the edge of the, uh, the wheel. Right? If it is greater than the, the specified amount in the service manual, then we have too much movement. The tips are probably worn, Maybe debris got through there or carbon built up on it and uh, it's excessive. There's no repair. It would typically be a replacement of a turbo. Uh, we don't re so much rebuild them anymore. Okay, in the first section of the video, we went over the radial measurement on the turbocharger uh, using a dial indicator and also talked about the feeler blade method. Uh, the second part is on the axial. Uh, the shaft moving in and out, also known as end play. We're going to use a dial indicator on that, just like you see in the picture here. So our setup uh, is very similar. The dial indicator, uh, the tip of it, will be against the end of the nut or the shaft that holds the turbine wheel or the compressor wheel, in, depending on which side, if it matters, that the service manual tells you to, to uh, set up on. So we have a firm uh, uh, attachment, the magnets holding the, uh, the base solid and the dial indicator solid. And I have it set for zero, but once again, it doesn't have to start at zero. You're going to go on the other side and move the, the shaft back and forth and see the total movement. 
right there I'm measuring about uh, 12 thousandths. We're, we're just a thousandths uh, before the zero. And it looks like uh, 86. So about 13 thousandths. And this one is uh, got a little bit more play than normal. But that's how you would do it. Move it in and out. Uh, you can put your hand on one side without bumping the dial indicator and assist moving it back and forth. In some cases the dial indicator might not be long enough and you may have to use uh, extensions or adapters and a little kit that you have here uh, has different points, different length tips. Uh, some of them get really uh, fine or tiny to get into certain situations uh, to, to make the measurement possible. So uh, if the dial indicator as it comes out of the box is not usable, uh, see your instructor and we'll help you adapt something that will work.